Lapras fires off the surf. Does the opponent want to shield the Charmer? They do not. Down they go. The opponent still has one shield remaining. What do they want to come in with? The opponent comes in with Giratina. And do they know about the Legacy Dragon Pulse? If they don't know, they're about to find out. So, welcome back to the home of Shadow Pokemon. My name is Jamie Finn, 1415. I was the first documented trainer in the world to reach Legend, only using Shadow Pokemon. I've actually done that for the last five consecutive seasons, and it's now come to the time where I'm contemplating using something else. I have put a vote out on my community tab, so if you'd like to see me continue to use Shadows, or if you'd like to see me play Unrestricted, cast your vote now. But today, we are looking at the new buff, Gliscor, with a very cool double legacy, Ice Shard, Dragon Pulse, Lapras. Why have one Legacy Ice type when you can have two? As his partner in crime today is going to be the Walrus on his double Legacy moveset of Powder Snow and Ice Cold Sphere. Without any further ado, let's get into the battles. And in game one, we lead Gliscor into the Bear Trap, Nick. Who is the featured battler today is not baiting. He lands the Earthquake. The Bear Trap gets absolutely wrecked. We snipe it with an Ice Shard. The opponent brings in Jellicent. Usually a pretty good answer for Lapras as most Lapras either run. Ice Beam or Skull Bash as a second move. Nick is using Dragon Pulse. Is the opponent ready for the damage? They are not. And Dragon Pulse does some respectable damage. So despite Lapras being able to hit for neutral, the non-stab Dragon Pulse doesn't do a whole lot. You can see Lapras is super thick. Jellicent is getting stabbed from Shadow Ball, but it's not doing a whole lot to the super bulky Lapras. So let's take a minute to talk about today's featured battler. The Black Luffy 92, aka my friend Nick. Absolutely phenomenal battler. He has reached 3,500 ELO on multiple occasions. He's got his own YouTube and Twitch, which I'm going to link down below. Go show the guy some love because he has got all the skills to pay the bills. Getting back into the battles, Lapras goes for one more Dragon Pulse and actually gained shield advantage in a matchup that's usually dreadful. Nick now brings in the big fat Walrus and the opponent looks to catch an Icicle Sphere. What do they catch it on? They catch it on the one HP Bear Trap. That is not going to save them. The opponent has Machamp in the back. This is just a cross chop. Nick can easily let it go. Cross chop is resisted. Gliscor laughs it off and once again, no baits on this channel. Does the opponent want to commit the final shield? Yes, they do. Machamp getting torn apart by these wing attacks. They commit to the counter farm down. Nick, still with two shields, can pretty much just shield everything and commit to a very nice Powder Snow farm down. The opponent is going to make one more charge with Nick commits. His final shield, Machamp, on one HP. And a dream. The opponent looks to bring in the Jellicent. Nick fires off the Icicle Sphere. This is going to take care of the Jellyfish. And one Powder Snow is going to be enough to take this game. GG's and thanks for playing. And we're off to a very impressive 1-0 start, heading into battle number two. We see the battle of the Shadow Gliscor's Nick with two great responses in the back. We say switch into Lapras, and as we are running an ABB team, we're looking to draw out the counter user, and that is exactly what we do. The opponent answers with Obstagoon Lapras showing its big bulk. We tank the Night Slash, no problem whatsoever, and Lapras returns fire with the Surf Obstagoon now deep in the yellow we are going to survive one more night slash the opponent clearly not on cross chop lapras gonna make surf number two so despite the unfavorable typing matchup this is pretty decent we've got them deep in the red gly score commits to the wing attack farm down they've now got a walrus in the back so pretty similar team comps but nick being the hero that he is, stay in school, kids. Learn to count. He catches the resisted Icicle Sphere on his own Walrus. And the opponent brings back in Gliscor. Bit of a questionable play as they are getting it. For double super effective, the opponent fires off a Night Slash Walrus. Returns fire with the Icicle Sphere. This is going to take care of Gliscor. We've both got two shields a piece, And it's the opponent's Walrus versus the World Nick going all the way to the Earthquake. We're not baiting, but does the opponent want to commit the first shield? They do not, and they're left very deep in the red. The opponent tried to call the bait and hashtag we were not baiting. And it looks like everyone's going to save two shields for season 14 as Gliscor commits to the wing attack farm down. And we take another very impressive game. GG's and thanks for playing. We are only two battles in and Nick already proving that that he is not a master beta. Moving on into the next one, we lead Shadow Gliscor into Steelix. Steelix is going to be resisting the wing attacks, but my fucking god, they are not going to resist the earthquake. Shiny Steelix fires off the Psychic Fang. Gliscor shrugs it off. Nick over farms considerably, going straight for the Hail Mary, but does the opponent respect the earthquake? 
Yes, they do, Nick. Now looking to pivot, making a great catch on his shiny shadow Lapras. I am very sad. I don't have a shadow shiny. As you can see by the left, the opponent fires the psychic fangs. They look to bank some energy. The opponent looks to catch a surf on the Cresselia. Nick very smartly held off his energy, but we're going to spam out surfs anyway. Dragon Pulse is nice coverage, but it definitely is not the best DP move for Lapras. So if you are going to run this super spicy moveset in neutral scenarios, just spam the shit out of surfs. This is the battle of the thick boys. Cresselia has got the advantage as they're on grass knot. And with our defense lowered, Nick lets his Lapras go down. He's now coming back into Gliscor. Nick choosing to shield up. We have now got shield parity. We're going to look to over farm. Is this going to be Night Slash range? They're now deep in the red. I imagine this Night Slash will knock out Nick. Has residual energy. Good to go. So if Steelix does return, Nick can fire off another Earthquake. Steelix comes back in, fires off. The Psychic Fang, Psychic Fang, doesn't knock out Nick, throws one wing attack. And the Earthquake, great fast move timing, it's two turn versus three turn. The opponent commits their final shield and now it is the big fat walruses. Time to clean up, up shields the opponent. Hopefully doesn't have a count user as they didn't bring it in, Steelix fires off. One more Psychic Fang's Nick needs to land the Earthquake. The opponent doesn't catch but does non-stab Earthquake. Knock out the super thick Steelix. Yes, it does. Down they go. And the opponent's final Pokemon is the big Tin Can. And this Tin Can is in trouble. The opponent is going to fire off a move. Focus Blast and Zap Cannon are super effective, but we've got one Protect Shield remaining. We shield up the Focus Blast return fire with the Earthquake, and the Tin Can does not appreciate that big damage. Nick can make one more Earthquake. He chooses to bank the Icicle Sphere. Come in to Gliscor. Gliscor is going to get off the Night Slash. Night Slash is neutral. You can see they're now in Icicle Sphere range. So regardless of what the opponent does, they are absolutely fucked. The opponent looked to commit to the Lock on Farm down. But Gliscor says, hold my beer. I've got you team. And that is all she wrote. GG's and thanks for playing. Moving on to the next battle. We lead Shadow Gliscor. Into Giratina, a pretty good matchup for Gliscor. We've got two better responses. In the back, the opponent shits their pants, thinking I do not fancy new buff Gliscor. And frankly, I don't fucking blame him as Gliscor is a monster. The opponent brings in a Charmer. Nick goes for the YOLO Earthquake and gets early shield advantage, then makes a pivot into his Lapras. As the opponent did pivot straight away into Sylveon, this could be the most toxic, bullshit, double charm strategy. Let's see. Nick is going to shield up. He's going to over farm to the back-to-back -back surf, so the opponent has zero chance of flipping switch. If they shield this first surf, Nick would spam out number two. We take out Sylveon. We're in the one-to-one -one shield, and oh gosh, does Giratina know about the Dragon Pulse? Well, if they don't know, they're about to find out Dragon Pulse. Goes unshielded, Giratina now left deep in the yellow. Let's see if this Giratina is rocking Ancient Power. They can pretty much throw whatever they like. They do throw the Ancient Power and they get the boost. You hate to see it back out. Comes Gliscor, we fire off the Night Slash. However, Giratina does return fire first. Dragon Claw does not KO. We all know that a boosted Giratina is going to shit their pants. Shield up the Night Slash, which they do. And it's now time for the Walrus. In comes Walrus. Boosted Ancient Power is going to hurt the opponent. Makes a great catch. Catching the Icicle Spear, probably on a Charmer. Is it a Charmer? Oh, fucking course it is. It is a Lowland Ninetales Nick. Not out of the woods yet. He needs to land the Earthquake. And leave with an Icicle Sphere for the Giratina. Or keep his shield as the Giratina has a move. We fire off the Earthquake. Earthquake doesn't knock out. Can we commit to the Powder Snow farm down Nine Tails? Makes a move. Nick is going to shield it up. Can we Powder Snow? Farm them down before they charm us down. Yes, we can. Who was worried? The big fat walrus says, fuck you, double charm. Fuck you, Giratina. And that is all she wrote. GG's and thanks for playing. Triple Shadows might be squishy, but the Big Fat Walrus is named the Big Fat Walrus for a reason because it still is pretty bulky. Moving on to the next one. We need Gliscor into Verizian. Pretty good because the wing attacks are super effective. The opponent pivots into Giratina and Nick super quick on his response to Lapras. Lapras is hitting for super effective with the Ice Shards. And we all know that Dragon Pulse is going to do big damage, Nick. Over farms heavily. The opponent is on Ancient Power. Let's see if they want to make a fight for switch advantage. The opponent lets the Dragon Pulse go. Nick commits to the farm down. The unfortunate thing for Nick is Verizian is going to commit to the double kick farm down. However, the super thick Lapras is going to fire off one more Dragon Pulse for the road. And Verizian now down to around 50% HP. 
if this Virizion is on Leaf Blade, despite us being a flyer, these Leaf Blades are going to hit for neutral due to our ground typing and the opponent fires off the Stone Edge. They switch out into Charizard and Nick brings out Water Ice type number two Walrus to respond. The wing attack buff Charizard is a real menace. Nick calls the bait and the opponent lands the blast burn and that does huge damage. Nick returns fire with an Icicle Sphere. The opponent commits their first shield. We make one more Icicle Sphere. This should get Charizard below 50% HP. However, the opponent chooses to go all shields down and holy crap, we are in trouble. Charizard has a whole heap of energy. Nick is going to have to respect a potential blast burn. But of course, the opponent has a little master baiting session. They bait us with a dragon claw. We lose CMP. Nick commits his final shield and the opponent is master baiting left, right and center. They have double dragon claw baiting us. And I think this is going to be game over. Night slash lands. Do we get the boost? We do not. Nick is going to have to farm down to have any chance of winning this game. Charizard fires off one more dragon claw. Dragon Claw doesn't knock out, back out, comes Virizion. Nick decides Night Slash isn't going to be enough to knock out, so he goes for the YOLO Earthquake to guarantee the knockout, and it's going to be Wing Attack versus Wing Attack, and holy smokes, an incredible game ends in a draw. GG's to both players. After getting double baited, I was almost certain that game was over. Nick's energy management on point manages to recover and get himself a tie. Moving on to the next battle, we see Kingdra in the lead. I really want to see Nick YOLO a pulse. He does pivot into Lapras. Come on, Kingdra. You know, you know you can survive any move. The opponent is staying in. They are going to YOLO. Probably an outrage. I can't see any reason to bait a Lapras. They do throw the outrage and they switch out into Mark. You hate to see it. I really wanted to see a YOLO Dragon Pulse. Lapras fires off the surf. The opponent is on Snarl. So the super thick Lapras is going to make one more surf. Surf is going to lower the health of this Mark. Can they snarl us down before the next one? Yes, they can. Mark now with residual energy. Good to go. We bring back out the Gliscor to soak up the Dark Pulse. And the opponent YOLOs a Gunk Shot. Um, interesting. Gunk Shot is resisted. And that does give Gliscor a nice farm down. Holy smokes. Why would you throw the Gunk Shot? Well, trash cans are pretty funny regardless. The opponent's final Pokemon is Togekiss. And their big fat Warriors is going to have it all to do. Kingdra, due to his dragon, water typing means that ice is neutral and the Warus can now do what Warruses do best and spam the shit out of Icicle Spheres. The opponent is going to fire a charge move. This is absolutely going to be an Octazooka, but we do need to save some health. The opponent gets the debuff. Holy shit, you hate to see it. Warus is going to fire off one more Icicle Sphere. The opponent is saving their final shield for the Charmer. Nick does get the Powder Snow farm down. Where is that switch timer? We need to reset this debuff. Nick fires off one Powder Snow and the Icicle Sphere. Does the opponent commit their final shield? Yes, they do. Switch timer has popped. Nick banks the move. And this game is now absolutely over. Incredibly high gameplay IQ from Nick. We just do a little bit of chip damage. Nick just has to save his shield. So if Togekiss does have a move, we can safely shield it up and spam out our Icicle Sphere. I'm not sure if we actually need our shield. I'm not sure who wins CMP out of Walrus and Togekiss, but the correct play there, the safe play, was saving a shield. So if they did have a move, you could shield it up and return fire with that spear. Beautiful gameplay from Nick. GG's and thanks for playing. As you can tell by the excitement, I love seeing Charmers get wrecked. Shout out to Nick, who always displays incredibly high gameplay IQ. Moving on to the next battle, we see Gliscor's worst nightmare and ice type in the lead due to our flying ground type, and we take double super effective. We come in to Lapras, the opponent YOLOs the Earthquake, and then make a pivot. I've seen the psychic type as I'm unsure if it's Cresselia or something like I'm used to. It is Cresselia, and the opponent really wants to maintain that positive Walrus on Gliscor alignment. So they actually commit a really early shield. As you can see, Surf doesn't really merit a shield, but it is what it is. Cresselia looking to get rid of this Lapras as soon as possible. They fire off the Grass Knot, and that does take out our Lapras. It's now time to come back in with Gliscor, and can we get a very nice boost? The opponent is going to spam out one more neutral grass knot. You can see with non-stab, that doesn't really do a whole heap of damage. Nick farms up to the Earthquake and is going to go fishing for that boost. Night Slash is going to go unshielded. Do we boost? We do not. However, Nick has residual energy. is going to fire off one more Night Slash. This will be taking care of Cresselia. Switch timer is up. Nick doesn't go for the catch. Instead, he opts to spam out straight into his Warus up shield and hope the big fat Blobbery Walrus can sweep this backline. 
the opponent is going to fire off what could be an earthquake and we get master baited. You hate to see it, Nick. Not baiting though, goes straight for the earthquake. An earthquake actually goes shielded. The opponent must be weak to ice in the back. Tough decision to make. The opponent is at what could be another earthquake, Nick. Commits his final shield. Shadow on shadow action. This Earthquake is going to do big damage. I don't think it is going to knock out. But the opponent didn't catch Earthquake. Goes unshielded. It does huge damage. We powder snow. Farm them all the way down. Show me something like a Giratina. We never know as the opponent concedes the match. GG's and thanks for playing. Moving on to the next battle. We see Dragonite in the lead. Immediate pivot into Lapras. The opponent stays in for a little bit and hard punish us with a Buzzworld. Well, I say hard punish. If the opponent goes straight for a super power, we're going to be sad. But I'm calling this opponent is going to go for a lunge. Let's find out the out of charge move. Is this the superpower? No, it's not. It is a lunge. So Lapras might make one more surf. Get there, Lapras. Yes, on one HP and a dream. The opponent, you, sir, need to learn not to masturbate Lapras. Gain shield advantage from a really negative matchup. That's why I always say hashtag I am not baiting. And I really don't understand why these buzzwalls always lunge. But it is what it is. We take that. Not only have they given up shield advantage, they give us a nice bit of farm on Gliscor. The opponent has Tapu Fini in the back and they then sacrifice Dragonite to the Poke Gods. Holy smokes, that is a really questionable play. Nick shields up the charge move. We're going to commit to the Powder Snow farm down. We've got residual energy. Good to go. This opponent is in a real mess. No disrespect, but I honestly have no idea what you are doing, trainer. We fire off the Earthquake. The Tapu Fini does shield it up. However, we're already at Earthquake. Number two, this is going to land for some heavy neutral damage. Tapu Fini is now going to have to Moonblast to take us out. They've baited us with a Dragon Claw and a Lunge. So Nick instantly calls the Surf. And this opponent does not disappoint with her third Master Baiting Session of the match. Nick can easily shield this up and YOLO an Earthquake at this very low HP Tapu Fini. But shout out home slice Henry, the opponent, sees the writing on the wall and quickly head for that top left. GG's and thanks for playing. So those were the battles from the Black Luffy 92 AK Nick. Make sure you go check him out on YouTube and Twitch. He doesn't actually stream that often on Twitch, but he was my third most viewed Twitch channel just because I love his cool chilled vibe and his phenomenal plays. It always gives me a chance to learn something new. So make sure you go to the description down below and you can find these links there. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button if you're new, consider subscribing. If you like your battles featured on the channel, a link to my battle submission form is also down below. I'd like to say thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.